Well, I never thought I'd see the light of days when we'd start running modern versions of programs on a 2006 operating system, but here we are. So guys, welcome to running modern versions of software in Windows Vista in 2020. Now you might be thinking, well, how is this possible in the first place? Every version of Windows is based on an NT version. Windows Vista was based on version 6.0, 7, 6.1, 8, 6.2, 8.1, 6.3, and Windows 10 is based on version 10.0, I guess to keep the naming and the operating system name consistent. But either way, programs actually check compatibility based on an NT version. So once they saw that Windows Vista was like end of support and like no one was using the operating system anymore, programs changed their minimum NT version from 6.0 to 6.1. And when you do the logic, that means that it'll only run on Windows 7 or later, which basically created like a blockade to Windows Vista users. But a user by the name of Win32 actually found a way to break this imaginary blockade and extended Windows Vista's kernel, which basically means that the operating system is tricked into thinking that it's running a later version of NT when in reality, it's still running version 6.0 or on Windows Vista. And that basically means that we can run modern versions of software on Windows Vista in 2020. Now, this list is really small, but this is only because this project has just started. It's really early in development. It's not in its final stages. So this is really just for testing only, but I really wanted to show the point that this is definitely possible and we can get a lot more software running in the future. Now, uh, from this list, I picked out a couple of software that I'm going to demonstrate today. So first off, I have Chromium 69. So usually we can only run Chromium versions 53 to 73. This could change in the future. This could be the latest version in the future. But right now, it's just Chromium versions 53 to 73 beta. I decided to run Chromium 69 uh, for the purposes of this video. Um, Google Earth, WhatsApp, which is actually a Windows 8 application. Opera 44. Now, this is actually an older version of Opera, but the last version to officially support Windows Vista and XP was actually version 36, but this is version 44, so again, I'm still trying to demonstrate the concept that this is a later version of Opera unofficially working on Windows Vista. And finally, Firefox version 79. This is the latest version of Firefox at the time of this recording, so, you know, let's just get into it. So, uh, how, how do we do this? So, I guess, let me demonstrate... I can't run any of these programs. The procedure entry point is not going to work. Close the program. Not going to work. Google Earth. Not going to work. Why is my sound not working? WhatsApp is actually a Windows 8 application. Now, it actually tricks you at first. It actually uh, comes up with the setup menu. Uh, but as you can see, shell32.dll. Not going to work. Close the program. Another error, same thing, close the program. Now, I, as I said, Opera 44 is an older version of Opera, but it doesn't run on Windows Vista. As you can see, not going to work. Now, we all know Firefox isn't going to work. This is a very, very recent version of Firefox, not going to work. And I, I, I have some of these programs in folders because they actually won't work. Because they actually won't work with like regular setup menus and stuff, so I have to put them in folders. Um, we'll get to this full, we'll get to this file in a second. This is actually pretty important. Uh, so how in the world are we going to run these programs on Windows Vista? Now, what we actually have to do is we have to go into our computer and we have to go into system 32 and we actually have to create certain patched versions of DLLs within system 32, most notably kernel 32.dll. Now, fortunately enough for us, Win32 actually provided a really good tutorial on how to patch kernel 32.dll. You basically copy the version within system 32 and start patching it with some programs he's, that he's provided in here. Now, unfortunately, this process takes a very long time and can get pretty complicated throughout the whole thing. And I actually created my own version of kernel 32.dll. I made a patched version, but I actually restored a snapshot of this virtual machine and I completely lost that patched version. Now, fortunately for me and everyone else on the internet, uh, WinCline5270, a YouTuber that does a lot of Windows Vista stuff, he actually created patched versions of uh, Windows Vista kernel files or Windows Vista System32 files. And that means that I don't have to go through that whole process of patching kernel 32dll And also, there's actually a lot more patch files in here, so you're not just limited to kernel 32dll um, you have a lot more files that you can patch and this greatly increases compatibility with the newer programs and uh, By the way while you're here, uh, I'm not going to provide a download link to this you I'm going to provide a link to the video and then you can download it from here but You also want to get this root certificates update for Windows Vista if you're running Google Chrome um, You want to have this this will come in handy later 
uh, this is the file I'm talking about. You want to keep this if you're using Chrome or any other Google application for that matter. Just keep this uh, with you. And what we need to do is we need to take these patch DLL files and replace the versions that are already on the system. Now, we can't just drag and drop these into System32. It doesn't work like that. Uh, the, the files are already being used by the system. So, so what we actually have to do is we have to launch CMD through a Windows setup file. And we have to use command prompt to copy and paste these into System32. So I'm going to go ahead, go into Windows Vista setup menu, and I'm going to go ahead and launch CMD. So we can go ahead and do this. So as I said, I'm going to go ahead, go into devices, optical drives, and we're going to go ahead and insert our Windows Vista setup disks. This might, this is going to get a bit complicated, but do not worry. This is, we'll get through this eventually. Now again, we're not reinstalling Windows Vista. That would be a big waste of time. What we actually need to do is we need to launch CMD within the setup menu. Uh, we're not repairing our computer either. We just need to launch CMD uh, somehow. We have to do it. So this is one way to do it. We just command prompt within here and now from command prop we need to this is going to get a bit complicated we need to cd into our c disk okay there you go uh then we need to cd into users cd into i think the username was windows vista and then cd uh into into desktop and oh i put in a folder what was it called cd patched files all right now what we need to do is we need to copy every single file that has a DLL extension into uh, local disk, Windows, System32. Okay, we want to say yes to all. So what we basically did is we used command prompt to copy all the files from our desktop, those patched DLL files that I just showed you. And we basically copied them into System32. Uh, because we can't do that in Windows because those files are already being used. So we have to do it through a command prompt or some other program. Just we have to do it some other way. So now it's gonna we're going to go ahead and restart the computer. Oh, beautiful. Okay. So once we've restarted our system, we basically patched all the System32 files that we needed to patch. So now we can launch our first program that I want to demonstrate, Chromium 69. Let's go ahead and launch it. And there we go. This is Chromium 69 running on Windows Vista. It's really, I can't believe those words just came out of my mouth. But as you can see, this is a modern version of Chromium uh, being run on Windows Vista. And again, this isn't regular Google Chrome. Um, I think regular Google Chrome just crashes or something. But don't lose hope. This, there, this project is still very early in development. And uh, this isn't like the final product or anything like that. This is still a beta and an alpha project. So, but I guess proof of concept, I mean, here we go. It's Chromium 69, version 69 in copyright 2020. Um, it says it might not function on Windows Vista anymore. Of course, it's going to say that like this isn't really supposed to be meant to be running at this point. But I mean, this is a Windows 7 application. This is supposed to be running on Windows 7 or later. And it's running on Vista. Now, here's the problem with this. If you go to a website, it'll give you an in, uh, like a connection that's not private error. This is where a root certificate update comes in handy. The download that WinClient 5270 provided. This is where I downloaded this from. Uh, it's called the Windows Vista root certificate update. You want to run this. It's a, it's it, it just, there's no setup. There's no like, um, there's no graphical UI. It just runs and wait about 15 to 20 seconds. And after that... It is fully working. Now, I mean, I, I can't believe this is working. I'm still lost for words. I just, this is ridiculous. I can't believe this is working. This is it. This is regular. This is Chromium 69. This isn't a fully up-to-date version of Chromium that we know. Uh, but this is a very close to modern version of Chrome on a 2006 operating system. I know I keep saying that, but it's just very impressive that the community has somehow gotten this to work. So um, I think there's some like uh, video codec issues, but again, it's still fully working. Most of your websites are going to be rendering properly. It's it's pretty impressive, to be honest. Same thing for Google Earth Pro. If we launch it, uh, again, you also need the root certificate update for um, Windows Vista for this program as well, because I think it starts like giving you some random errors whenever you like SSL errors. And as you can see, Google Earth is fully working version 7.3.3 .3 
build date July 21st, 2020. So this is a very, very recent version of Google Earth. Now on my screen, uh, if you see this white thing, I don't know if my recording software captures this, but there's a white screen right here. And this is because uh, my recording software can't actually capture uh, the, the globe. It can't capture the map. And I think it, it's because it uses some graphical power uh, that my recording software just can't capture properly. So if you see a white screen here, which we probably do, I can re rest assure you there is Google Earth. There's the map. There's a map that's supposed to be appearing here. Uh, WhatsApp. Now, this is a Windows 8 application, as I said before. We remember it got to the setup menu. And it didn't work before, but if we launch it, if we launch setup now, as you can see, it's not going to crash anymore. So that's good. All right. So setup worked. And there you go. This is, a, you can see that judging by these X buttons, this was made for Windows 8 and Windows 10 in mind. But as you can see, this is WhatsApp. This is WhatsApp being run on Windows Vista. This is a Windows 8 application and it's running on Windows Vista. That is as crazy enough as it sounds, it's working. Uh, so that's WhatsApp. Opera 44, again, it's an older version, but as we saw before, it didn't work. Now, it is fully working. Version 44 is fully working. Menu, about Opera, version 44. And it actually detects itself as Windows Vista as well, which is pretty good. Now, Firefox is actually slightly different because it's built in a different way. If we launch Firefox, it's not actually a kernel 32.dll error or any system 32 error. It's actually a win it's not a valid Win32 application error. So this is a slightly different issue. Now, so what we actually need is we need a program called CFF Explorer. This is extremely important. And what we need to do is we need to find Firefox.exe. Once we do that, we have to open uh, Firefox.exe with CFF Explorer. This is going to get a bit complicated. Um, actually, it's not that complicated, to be honest. What you need to do is you need to go to optional headers. You need to go to major operating system version and minor operating system version. This basically stands for the kernel version, 6.1. The point one is the, it's basically this shows that its minimum version is Windows 7. We want to change this to 6.0 to show that it can run Windows Vista. We're tricking the thing into thinking that it can run Windows Vista. So as you can see, uh, both for both of these, major operating system version, minor operating system version, major subsystem version, minor subsystem version. Change both of these to 6.0. Uh, we also need to go to the import directory and we need to go to ntdll.dll and we need to go to RTL query performance counter and we want to rename this to NT query information process. And that's pretty much it. Now, uh, what after that you just want to save the file and you can close it now and what's generally recommended is that you go through every single exe file in firefox and you go to again optional headers and change the major and minor version to 6.0 uh, you don't have to do that nt dll thing for the other exe versions but you can do the major and minor operating system version thing and the major subsystem version as well uh, but you don't have to do the ntdll.dll, but even then, you don't have to do it for the other exe files. You can just do Firefox, it's just that the other exe files won't run properly, but as you can see, f <laughs> this is crazy, man. The latest version of Firefox running on Windows Vista, version 79, um, I how can I prove this again? Let me, tr I know I saw, I'd made a community post recently. Someone didn't believe me. Someone thought this was a reskinned version of windows seven. This is regular windows seven. This is, uh, no, this isn't windows seven. This is windows Vista. The control panel is, this is windows Vista control panel. Um, the properties, windows Vista business, uh, you know, everything it's, it's windows Vista. I, I promise this is windows Vista. This is running, go, let's, let's go to help, let's go about Firefox, version 79.0, Firefox is up to date, everything, Firefox is working completely, go to youtube.com, it runs really well, and I'm pretty sure this is because um, this is optimized to run on Windows 7, and Windows 7 and Windows Vista are like the same thing, so whatever is optimized on Windows 7, it's going to be optimized to run on Windows Vista as well, so that's pretty funny. I mean, I can't believe this. We're running the latest version of Firefox. This isn't even an ESR version. This is the regular version of Firefox, the latest version being run on Windows Vista. Like, this is... The latest version. I can't believe this. This is crazy to me. Everything even runs properly. Google works. Like I'm gonna watch. I'm gonna like run a bunch of websites. Google.com, 
um, Wikipedia, because why not? Google search works. Look, we're going to websites. Everything is working. Latest version of Firefox is running on Windows Vista. This is ridiculous. I can't believe this. But yeah, that is that is pretty much it. That is the latest version of Firefox running on Windows Vista, in addition to uh, the close to modern version of Chromium, uh, which is working just fine, except you just need a little patch for Chromium as well with the root certificate update. That This is working just fine. Google Earth is running just fine. It's just my recording software wasn't picking it up. Uh, WhatsApp, latest version of WhatsApp that's supposed to be running on Windows 8 is running on Windows Vista. Opera, again, this is an older version of Opera, but again, it's not supposed to be running on Windows Vista, but here we are. All these applications that are not supposed to be running on Vista are running on Vista now. In addition to... Uh, all the all this other all these other applications now if you want to see me do a part two to this video where I test even more applications let me know I can certainly do a part two to this video if the support is there and big thank you to winclein5270 for providing me with certain files that I didn't have before um, where I deleted my kernel 32.dll file we're not talking about that but yeah thank you for those files and the root certificate update for Windows Vista uh, download link that was nice too Definitely check him out. His video will be in the description for the downloads if you want that. Uh, but anyways, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. But at this rate, if we're able to run the latest version of Firefox and modern versions of these applications, I wouldn't be surprised if Windows Vista would be able to run Fortnite.